Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to White Robes Family. My name is Simonai, and these are the words I am compelled to present to an awakening set apart nation. My brothers and sisters, this is the 51st installment of White Robes Family, this series of messages. And you may very well see if you're looking at the screen where the title is The Awakening. What next? Questions and answers. My brothers and sisters, end times are here. They are ramping up and they are gradually erasing the uncertainties while introducing new uncertainties. In other words, my brothers and sisters, many of us are becoming anxious, looking forward to being moved out of this captive land at the appointed time that the Almighty Father has in his schedule. My brothers and sisters, if you are one with questions, if you are one that is seeking to grow in maturity, if you are one who discovered that you are indeed being drawn by the Almighty Father, some of us, our spirit within is stirring and we don't know why. We may be missing sleep and we don't know why. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, there is an inward man that stirs within us. Your inner spirit stirs within these earthen vessels and it will indeed begin to identify the stirring from the spirit of the Almighty Father, Yahuwah, in Yahushua's name. Right now, without any doubt, there's a great awakening. Many will say the awakening. And I say to you, it's more than just discovering that you are an ancestor of the chosen children of Yahuwah, that you are a seed of Abraham, that the many lives that have been taken place to hide us are eroding. It's a phenomenal thing to recognize the awakening, but it comes with responsibility, things that we will be held account accountable for. Yasharal, the great awakening, is more than just waking up and identifying your identity. And I'm just saying those who are set apart. You see, there are some in Yasharal of the body, of the, of the race, Yasharal, that are not part of the set apart Yasharal. My messages are addressed to set apart Yasharal. Set apart Yasharal represents the chosen children of the Almighty Father Yahuwah, who are made alive by Yahushua Mashiach. The chosen ones who are Hebrews, Abraham, and, and Goyim, other nations, Gentiles, who seek to do the will of the Almighty Father, who together are brought together as one under one banner, Yasharal. Make no mistake, the world must acknowledge and will acknowledge who the true children of Yasharal represent. These things are necessary. The world will come to admit who are Goyim, other nations, the Gentiles. These things must come to be in order for us to recognize the fulfillment of end times, the nationalities as described at minimum in Revelation 7 chapter, which mentions the 12 tribes of Yasharal, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. But make no mistake, in the ninth verse in the seventh chapter, it speaks of a great multitude this consists of Hebrews or Abraham as well, along with Gentiles. You see, my brothers and sisters, not everyone will begin to identify with a specific tribe of the 12 directly. And so the Most High understands and he knew this would be the case. And he said, a great multitude of many nations, kindreds, and tongues. That includes those who cannot identify with a specific tribe, but one nation the set apart ones all will identify with, and that is the nation of Yasharal, set apart nation. My brothers and sisters, how many of us have ever worn glasses? And when things are blurred, we clean them. How many of us have ever looked through binoculars or a telescope? Do we not work the adjustable lens to get focus? How many of us have watched through a camera lens, and if it was blurred, we work to adjust it. How many of us has, have had a vehicle or written in a vehicle and the windows were dirty and you couldn't see clearly the things that was coming along, 
or how many have ridden in any type of vehicle in the rain, the water splattered against the windshields and you couldn't see clearly. Did not the operator of that vehicle turn on the windshield wipers? Have we not been in times when you wipe away the things that may fog or blur a lens? If you can relate to what I just said, so it is with growing and set of partners. The necessity to work to cleanse the lens, to clear the matters up so that we can see clearly, will come to be spiritually and literally, my brothers and sisters. Our eyes will be opened. The things that were once hidden are being revealed before us as we find ourselves in this awakening. So the question is, what next? What next is the unifying of a set-apart nation? Let me read this, and I'll go on and get more into this, my brothers and sisters. I invite your patience. This one might take a little while. Pray for me, my brothers and sisters, that I'm able to yield to the spirit of Yahushua as he guide my words, my actions. Warning disclaimer, the information contained in White Rose Family represents instructions and warnings to individuals who believe they are drawn by the almighty creator, Yahuwah, to Yahushua Mashiach. The content presented centers around end-time realities. Please be advised this site is not intended for children under 16 years of age due to its content. By continuing forward, you agree to hold seminar harmless of any influence or actions that arise as a result of watching, listening, and reviewing the content presented. The views expressed do not reflect the owners, management, and shareholders of this media platform. Also be mindful, my brothers and sisters. I am not affiliated with anyone or organization with similar names. With that said, let's press on. The Awakening. What next? My brothers and sisters, what next? Questions and answers. So one of the things I want to do as I take you through this message, my brothers and sisters, is stimulate your mind and stir your spirit. Consider this. Choosing our questions. What questions are we asking as we seek answers into unity? What questions do we ask among one another as we examine one another? What questions do we ask ourselves? One specific question I want to bring about is defining the awakening. What do you think the awakening represents, my brothers and sisters? What does it mean to you? And I want you to begin asking this to others as they are awakening. For me, the awakening is our eyes are opening up. We begin to see more clearly the truth, truth that's been hidden for many years, truth that has been kept from us. The awakening means we begin to identify how man has tampered with the text in an effort to try to hide the true names that are important, the Almighty Father Yahuwah and His Word, Him, His Word manifest in the person of Yahushua. The truth regarding how Yahuwah and Yahushua are one. The awakening. The awakening is stimulating many people to realize there's work to be done. There are others still asleep. Begin having discussion and choosing questions wisely, my brothers, as in, what is the awakening? And in doing so, my brothers and sisters, it is important that we begin to discern the almighty Yahuwah's answers to the questions that we have. Discerning the almighty Yahuwah answers. He will answer to us in spirit directly or working through another working through us one towards another. Answers will come, my brothers and sisters. It's time for us to realize that. And let me provide scriptures as we go along this journey in this message, my brothers and sisters. Here, as you can see, I have Romans chapter 10, verse 13 through 15. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, though we may cherry-pick scriptures, as some call it, as long as in our cherry picking, we keep it connected to all that exists in his word. Case in point, 
Just because a person call on the name of Yahuwah doesn't mean he's going to be saved. And by picking the scripture, you can say, well, that's what it says in the word. That's what it says in this text, but that's not all of the text. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, this is referencing those drawn by the almighty father for to be drawn by him. We respond by calling on him. 10, 14 say, how then shall they call on him? You see whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without one proclaiming? Some translations say preaching. And how shall they proclaim if they are not sent? And as it has been written, how pleasant are the feet of those who bring the good news of peace, who bring the good news of good. My brothers and sisters, there is much work to be done. And preaching come in many ways. We will speak out in many ways, my brothers and sisters. We will learn to focus. We will learn to look forward and keep our heads straight. History has its place, but there's so much ahead of us. What I'm about to do right now, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to go through each of these key words. For I believe these are some important factors during these end times. As the scripture says, regarding the white robes in Revelation 7 chapter, being washed in the blood of the Lamb, I submit to you that in that washing, my brothers and sisters, these words will be key. Drawn, belief, discern, see, hear, worship, obey. Now, I know many of us will look at this and we say, okay, drawn, sometimes we struggle trying to identify that the Spirit of Yahuwah has drawn us. Belief we wrestle with because of the many erroneous doctrines and teachings that are out there. The result of people being over anxious and overzealous. Discern. Many people may take the academic definition opposed to looking at discernment as the spirit of Yahushua revealing. And you see, my brothers and sisters, there has been many among us who will say, I should have went with my first mind, my first conscience. Something told me. We need to begin to ask when we are influenced by one thing or another. Is this the spirit of Yahushua? Is this the spirit of the almighty father Yahuwah working in us, through us, or is it the enemy? Our conscience, believe it or not, that brain, right? That muscle inside that, that membrane in this skull has been programmed and conditioned by our captors, by the things we see by the things we've been around growing up. And so it, it, it has a rationale of its own. But there's a spirit connected with the Almighty Father, my brothers and sisters. We will learn the meaning of discernment as we find things that we think are our first conscience or our first mind as we discover that they are indeed the spirit of the Most High working in us. See, sometimes we are blinded. We can't, there's a cliche, you can't see the trees for the forest. Sometimes people are busy looking at the distractions and other things than focusing, hearing. Oftentimes we communicate with one another, but we're not talking apples to apples. There are even people who will say, let's agree to disagree. That's a wicked statement, my brothers and sisters. There's nothing in scripture to say, let us agree to disagree. We can agree that a disagreement exists but to maintain fellowship while there is disagreement, we will find is problematic. Create schism, eels, my brothers and sisters. Worship. I have no doubt that we understand the dynamics of the need to worship the Almighty Father. Now, obey. That's one that's a challenge for many. So, my brothers and sisters, each of these terms, I'm going to spend the next several minutes talking about it one by one. Come with me as we go through them, my brothers and sisters. The first one will be drawn. And you see on the screen where it says discerning the teacher's presence. Yahushua Mashiach. You see in John 14, 26, we see some dynamics here. One, we see that the Almighty Father sent his set-apart spirit in Yahushua's name. 
The other thing we see, O Yasharal, and we will learn to understand the fullness of, is that he sent his set-apart spirit in Yahushua's name to teach us and to remind us. Even though John 14, 26, the literal, is a conversation that Yahushua had with his taught ones, it goes beyond that. If you look in John 4th chapter and the encounter that the woman at the well had, in John 4, 13 and 14, the encounter that she had, the Mashiach told her, I will give you endless water, endless words. So we can read the literal, and there's so much more beyond the literal, my brothers and sisters. Pray and watch. But let's move into this thing of being drawn. Drawn by the Almighty Father. John 6, 43 and 44. Then Yahushua answered and said to them, Do not grumble with one another. No one is able to come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I shall raise him up in the last days. One, are we in the last days? Indeed, we are. Notice he said, don't grumble with one another. You know, my brothers and sisters, you've seen it as we are awakening some of us think the word next is I got to go tell everyone. I got I to gotta make them come into the truth. I got to make them come into obedience. I got to make them worship the Almighty Father. We cannot force the spirit of Yahuwah into another. We cannot force someone to wake up, my brothers and sisters. And he's telling us, don't grumble with one another. No one is able to come to me unless the Father sent me draws them. So what we can begin to do it's ask questions to see if someone experiencing a stirring within and they try and identify something that's drawing them to the love, the peace, the set of partners of the Almighty Father. Drawn. If you're not drawn, my brothers and sisters, so many of us are trying to beat up on people we love and care about and get them to see the truth, and they may not be drawn. Maybe we're using the wrong tactic. Maybe we should pray for them, ask questions, present the truth, preach when we're called to preach, or speak when we're called to preach, or teach when we're called to teach. Drawn, my brothers and sisters, let us believe and trust that the Almighty Father will be successful in drawing them, as in working with us, through us, one towards another, to confirm and reaffirm his drawing power. Next, my brothers and sisters, belief. Belief. What's the... What, does our teacher have to say about this matter? Let's talk about some things about belief. Let me share some scriptures with you, my brothers and sisters. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, And belief is the substance of what is expected, the proof of what is not seen. There's going to be a lot of instruction that we receive. There's going to be living orders going forward that we may not see the evidence right away, my brothers and sisters. But it will come. We will enlarge in belief in the coming of days. Make no mistake, belief is critical. Hebrews 11, 6 say, but without belief, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to the Almighty One has to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. Belief, my brothers and sisters. Another one I want to bring to your attention. Yasharal, and I speak of it often because I believe this is part of the awakening, beginning to realize that, wow, the spirit of Yahushua reached beyond my brain and into my spirit. My spirit, my inward man, began to identify the presence of the spirit of Yahushua. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, discernment is critical. It helps relieve us of some of the battles that we strain with when we're not paying attention to the spirit of the voice of Yahushua. Discern. Let me read, my brothers and sisters. Some scripture. Philippians 1, 9 through 11 reads, And this I pray, that your love might extend more and more in knowledge and all discernment. 
for you to examine the matters that differ. And I say examine is just as saying vet, ask questions. It say in order to be sincere and not stumbling until the day of Messiah, being filled with the fruit of righteousness through Yahushua Messiah to the esteem and praise of the Almighty One. You see, my brothers and sisters, discernment is critical. And the Almighty Father basically told us that he will indeed discipline his children. Discipline comes, my brothers and sisters. He will discipline his children, and we will learn what is expected in the coming days. Make no mistake, Joshua, as end times ramp up, it's important that these dynamics become a part of our strength. The next thing regarding C, discerning what the teacher has to say. What is he making alive before us so that we can physically see and spiritually see? You see, my brothers and sisters, yes, I think by now I'm compelled to believe that most of us that are awakening are beginning to realize there's a spiritual eye. There's the sight of the inward man, that inward spirit that is linked to Yahushua Mashiach, that is linked to the Almighty Father. Let me read this on the matter of C. And of course, these verses, my brothers and sisters, they're not the only ones that talk about growing in maturity or things that are necessary for us to grow closer to one another. Proverbs 1.23 says, Turn at my reproof. I See, I pour out my spirit on you. I make my words known to you. Some people may read this and just think about the turn at reproof, turn at correction. But notice he's saying, see, see, I pour out my spirit on you. I make my words known to you. This is not just talking about spiritually, my brothers and sisters, us having a spiritual encounter with the Most High directly. It's not just talking about that. He wants us to see him working through a brother or a sister as he worked through us one towards another. See, he pour out his spirit towards us who are his children. Ecclesiastes 7.13 says, See the work of the Almighty One, for who is able to make straight what he has made crooked? Deuteronomy 29.4 reads, and I have these on the screen, my brothers and sisters, if you're listening from a distance. Deuteronomy 24.4 says, But Yahuwah has not given you a heart to know and eyes to see and ears to hear to this day. You see, my brothers and sisters, there are those who are not given a heart to know, to see, and to hear. And this is referencing times, a time of rebellion. Those who are drawn, our eyes will be made to see. Our ears will be made to hear. Those who fight against the Most High will find a different experience. Ezekiel 12, 2 says, Son of man, you are dwelling in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but they have not seen. They have ears to hear, but they have not heard, for they are a rebellious house. You see, my brothers and sisters, in rebellion, rebellion can lead that we're not able to see clearly. Are you not aware that sometimes the Almighty Father blind the foolish? Sometimes even his own children face blindness to slow us down, to get us to pause and seek him. And then he opened our eyes. See, things happen because, see, the fruit of rebellion, the fruit of unbelief will lead to us becoming blind spiritually and in some cases, maybe even literally. You might say, well, what do you mean? Read a passage of scripture. Have someone else read the same thing and see what they get out of it. Now, sometimes we can read scriptures and get something different, but if those differences do not join hand, if they do not connect, my brothers and sisters, something's wrong. Now, if those differences can connect, whether directly or ultimately, if they can connect, and this can be determined by examining what message is being said, what are you receiving from that passage? 
Are we talking apples to apples, oranges to oranges? Are we on the same page? That's another phrase that we say. Because sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we're not. Sometimes we find ourselves too excited to speak. We're letting someone else talk. And noise is coming out of their mouth, but in our mind, when they finish talking, now I can say what I have to say. You've seen it. There's a lot of people among us, O Yasharal. I'm not concerned about the wicked. I'm talking about the inner court, those who are set apart by the Almighty Father, those who are drawn by Yahuwah to Yahushua Mashiach. You've seen it. Look at a person's gestures, their eye contact, eyes, their mannerism. Sometimes test them. Ask them, what did I just say? What did you get from what I just said? And you may begin to discover many mores, teachers, leaders, bishops, pastors, very influential individuals may not be able to answer what you just said because they're busy waiting for you to stop talking so they can tell you what they want to say. We must learn to listen for the spirit of Yahuwah works in us, through us, one towards another. The very words that come out of our mouths can be guided by the Almighty Father. Pray, O Yasharal, hear. Let me read something about hear, my brothers and sisters. Proverbs 4.1 say, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. My brothers and sisters, hear the instruction of the Father. First, we must be able to identify, is it indeed the Father? So we ask questions. We study, we pray, we seek counsel so that we can know it is the Father and recognize the need to understand what he's saying so that we can obey him, so that we can improve in worship. So we must hear we must know that the instruction is coming from the Father, the instruction of the Father, and we must seek understanding. Proverbs 5, 7 says, So now listen to me, you children. Do not turn away from the words of my mouth. You see, let us be careful when we step away. Let us be careful of those who may falsely accuse the chosen ones of the Almighty Father, who may falsely reject Individuals that are being used by the spirit of Yahushua. Let us learn to listen to him and identify when he's speaking. It shouldn't have to take a donkey's mouth to be open for us to recognize the power of the Most High reaching out to us. We should not have to see stones cry out for us to recognize the Most High is talking to us. We should understand that we have physical ears and we have spiritual ears. Matthew eleven fifteen 15 says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. You see, even a deaf person will hear spiritually and receive the messages from the Almighty Father. Make no mistake, there are no excuses. We have an obligation to begin to listen to one another, not just hear the noise, not to say we've listened to that person. We have an obligation to know what that person is saying. We have an obligation to examine the words of that individual. Is this Yahushua speaking through that person? Or are we trying to be stingy? Are we trying to be individuals who say, this is, this is coming from me, this is me, I did this and I did that. Make no mistake, my brothers and sisters, we are influenced in more ways than we can imagine. Let us look for, accept, and yield to the influence from the Spirit of the Most High. Matthew 13, 16, 17 saying, Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous ones long to see what you see and do not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. My brothers and sisters, there's the literal of these scriptures. There's far more beyond the literal that feeds our spirit and strengthens our mind, that strengthens the body of Yasharal. What say you, my brothers and sisters? This awakening, what next, comes with details, processes, work, tasks from each of us, and every one of us is critical and important, my brothers and sisters. 
hear what the spirit of Yahushua is saying to you. For he is indeed our teacher. He is indeed Yahuwah, spirit that has been sent to us in Yahushua's name. We will understand these dynamics as we find ourselves growing closer, closer to one another, as we find ourselves in preparation for these final days. There will be contributors towards information in these final days who will face physical death before the physical return of Yahushua Mashiach. There are those among us who will find that we are receiving instructions that builds us up and make us strong to prepare us for martyrdom. Death for Yahushua's name. And there are those of us who are being strengthened to shelter in place, even when destruction is at our doorstep, to be the last words that the Most High has to say to those who are caught and trapped before they face physical death. They would have heard a message from the Almighty Father coming through one of us. And there are those of us who will be gathered physically, literally, from the four corners of the earth to the promised land, that central and focal point being Mount Sinai, the true Mount Sinai, which is currently named Jabal al Laws, situated in the northwest quadrant of what is now known as Saudi Arabia. Yasharal, oh Yasharal. In hearing, we discover a lot. In hearing, as we discover the voice, the presence of the Most High, the workings of the Most High, Father Yahuwah, in Yahushua's name, working in us as we discover what it means to walk filled with the Spirit. We will discover how to better worship Him. He who is the Aleph, the Ta, the beginning, the end, the Almighty One, the Creator, Abba Yahuwah. We will discover much, and our worship to Him will indeed improve, my brothers and sisters. Worship. Let's look at some things here regarding worship, my brothers and sisters. John 4, 24 reads, the Almighty One, I know it says Elohim, my brothers and sisters, but Elohim One means the Almighty One's plural. There's only one Almighty Father. And so when you see me read over that as the Almighty One, I want you to make no mistake. I know that the text has been tampered with. And there are those who would rather have us think that there are mighty one, all mighty ones, plural, around us. No, 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 no. There's one almighty one. That's the almighty father. Now, the plurality of his works comes when he's working through us one towards another. Multiple people that he's working through brings the plurality of the almighty one. And that's another subject for discussion. I've been compelled to say and read it as the almighty one. The Almighty One is spirit, and those who worship him need to worship in spirit and in truth. You see, my brothers and sisters, it begins with the inward man, discerning, understanding, believing the things we cannot see, a desire to worship him. And then it comes without. It enters our spirit, and our spirit, as we bring these earthen vessels to subjection, we demonstrate through our walk through our actions, through our obedience to his Ten Commandments, his laws, his statutes, his living instructions. Though many have conceded and yielded to think that the Torah is just the five books of Moses or Moshe, Torah means instructions. Torah means laws. Ask yourself, my brothers and sisters, if the Most High instructed us to do something and we didn't do it, Doesn't that come with consequences? Hold your point while I read this here next verse. Uh, le well, let me hold that thought. Let me read this next verse. Revelation 15, 4 says, Who shall not fear you, O Yahuwah, and esteem your name, because you alone are kind, because all nations shall come and worship before you, for your righteousness have been made manifest. Yashara, on the matter of worship, Getting back to that point of Torah. If you think Torah is just the five books of Moses, and you hear people saying Torah, hap Torah, and then they'll say, uh, or they'll say the Tanakh and the New Covenant. From Genesis to Revelation represents the inspired written word from the Almighty Father. Though man will want to say, well, Paul, those were just letters. What's a letter? Define a letter. Define a book. 
Are we not reading words that are collected that collectively present a message? You see, the enemy likes to divide, my brothers and sisters, and we'll get hung up on arguing whether Paul's words were a letter or scriptures. Instead of looking at it was a message with instruction, with teachings. Make no mistake, my brothers and sisters, as we grow in worship, we will understand that there are layers of words that are brought out that can create divisions and arguments because of us trying to decipher something without praying to discern what the teacher is saying about a matter. Worship, my brothers and sisters. What I was getting ready to say, if Torah is just the five books of Musha and you don't yield to the Torah, keep in mind that the Ten Commandments are in Exodus. Keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, if you don't obey that, then there comes with consequences. But what about the rest of the scriptures? Do you think you can disregard them? Do you think you can water them down and say, oh, oh these words are stronger than us? My brothers and sisters, all that the Most High have presented before us, all that he makes alive in the scriptures and more. Everything that is instructed of us is not written in the scriptures, but they line up with the scriptures if we are indeed yielding to him, making it clear to us. If we broadside it, this side or that side, by a portion of the scriptures, herein lies when there's problems. Let one be well learned as well as capable of discerning, O Yasharal. All of this contributes to improving our worship before the Almighty Father. And then that one that we struggle with the most, obey. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we wrestle with this one, don't we? Obeying the Almighty Father. Let me read the following. Deuteronomy 4.30 says, In your distress, when all these words shall come upon you in the latter days, then you shall return to Yahuwah, your Almighty One, and shall obey His voice. Notice that he said, in your distress. Notice that he mentioned latter days. You see, my brothers and sisters, during distress in latter days, we will weaken and we will return to the Almighty Father. And you might say, well, what do you mean by that? What I'm saying is this, O Yasharal. Many of us are awakened. Many of us begin to identify we're being drawn by the Almighty Father. But sometimes in our excitement, sometimes being overzealous, we overstep our bounds. Are you not aware that in Revelation, when he speaks in chapter 1 through 3 of the different assemblies, and on occasion, there was a time where he said, remember where you've fallen? My brothers and sisters, obedience is important. 1 Samuel 15, 22 reads, Then Samuel said, Does Yahuwah delight in ascending offerings and slaughterings as in obeying the voice of Yahuwah? Look, to obey is better than a slaughtering. Some versions say better than sacrifice. To heed is better than the fat of rams. And then John 3, that was 1 Samuel 15, 22, my brothers and sisters, and it's on the screen. John 3, 36 says, He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of the Almighty One remains on him. My brothers and sisters, obedience is something that we wrestle with. Among men, I'm a grown man. I don't need to obey him. Woman, I'm a grown woman. I don't need to obey him. My brothers and sisters, have we ever given thought that sometimes as the Most High use us one towards another to deliver living orders, that these are orders for our betterment? These are orders that will lead us into something afresh, something new, 
Now, then there are those that say, oh, Ecclesiastes says nothing new under the sun. Make no mistake, my brothers and sisters, there are things that are similar, that are things that are cyclical, circular. But each of us sometimes will experience some things that it may be new to us, to the listener, to the recipient. There are many messages that have gone forward, and sometimes people don't get it right away. There's no such thing as a good excuse. I'm just saying a reality of what exists. But let us begin to look at how being obedient is important, how the word obey is important. You see, my brothers and sisters, there's going to be situations in end times when earthquakes, exposure to disease or famine, volcanic activity, tsunamis, meteors, fire coming out the sky, bombs dropped. There's going to be time when somebody's going to say, get out of there. Move away from this. Just as I tell Yashara right now, prepare for a movement comes, my brothers and sisters. Some, I believe, are being ordered to move right now, and some are being prepared for movement. Don't look at the person on one side and say, they're sitting still, so I'm going to sit still. Maybe the Most High wants you to blaze that trail and get some things in order so they may come along later. And maybe that person may be mistaken and sitting still and slowful and lazy. Make no mistake, each of us must look in the mirror and ask the spirit of Yahuwah, what are you preparing me for? What is it that you expect of me now and going forward? Obedience will save lives physically. Obedience will yield to life everlasting, identifying it more fuller. Yasharal. Consider these words as I talk more about obey. Exodus 19th chapter, verse 5 and 6 reads, And now if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a reign of priests and a set-apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Yasharal. My brothers and sisters, instructions given by the Almighty Father to deliver to his children, literally then and literally now and spiritually now. My brothers and sisters, Many people fail to recognize when they say you shall be to me a reign of priests and set apart nation. That's speaking of walking in obedience, engaging one another in obedience as we are led by the spirit of Yahuwah. That is the priests in us rising up. There are some people looking at it like, yeah, we are priests. We are going to do this and do that. Yeah, we're going to rule over them. Don't become delusional, my brothers and sisters. Don't think more highly of yourself than what the Most High have. Let us always... Pray and seek to discern and respond accordingly. Let me continue. Jeremiah, that was Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 3 through 5 reads, And you shall say to them, Thus saith Yahuwah, the Almighty One of Yasharal, Cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant, which I command your fathers in the day when I brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, some virgin might say Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and you shall do according to all that I command you, and you shall be my people, and I shall be your Almighty One. In order to establish the oath which I have sworn to your fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. And I answered and said, Amen. Yahuwah. My brothers and sisters, hearing and obeying the living words from the Almighty Father. I can't stress this enough. I cannot stress enough how end times are ramping up. We are in a time, my brothers and sisters, where any teacher, any moray, any pastor, any bishop, any shepherd, any group head, anyone that is outspoken and influential in the body of Yashara, 
we are in a time where we must preside in a way where we provide information to the unlearned, the least of the mature among us, that we must begin to give them information. So in the event of our death, in the event of the Most High calling us to the grave, let us know that his word will go forward and is going forward. Since the days of life's beginning, his words will go forward. And they will accomplish what they're supposed to accomplish. Visit Isaiah 55, 11. Let us not try to hold on to the learnings that we are receiving, information that we know is making us strong and say, well, that's going to make me be a good teacher. This, I'm going to, I, I got this from that person. Or I got this from that pastor or that bishop or this out. I'm not going to tell anybody that you, who should work through that person. I'm not going to even let that person know that I am grateful that the spirit of you who should work through them and they yielded to his spirit and brought something set apart to me. The scriptures tell us to exhort one another. That's lifting one another up as the spirit of the most high is working in us and through us. In times I hear weighing options, choosing, acting by obeying is paramount. We must weigh, we must examine our choices, our actions. We must seek to choose wisely. Are there options? Sure. But there are benefits and consequences as well. We must begin acting, my brothers and sisters. Acting might be passing information on alone, physically working to build up the most high's body, preparing for what's ahead. More than anything, my brothers and sisters, acting is about obeying what the Almighty Father has to say to us and is saying to us. Yasharal, make no mistake. Discerning the right questions and answers are paramount. Let me read 2 Timothy 2.23. It reads, but refuse foolish and stupid questions knowing that they breed quarrels. There's something called rhetorical questions, my brothers and sisters. This is when someone asks you a question and they already have the answer. That's rhetorical. It's not necessarily bad. If it is rhetorical, then ask the person, what are you looking, what's your position? Since you asked that question, do you have an answer? They may say yes, they may say no. But let's not get into just asking questions just to be asking questions. Sometimes we waste time. How much time is being wasted? Debating on whether the earth is round or flat. Might want to think on that, my brothers and sisters, and pray on that. How much time is debated on what we're going to do in this afterlife? Sometimes people ask questions, my brothers and sisters. Now, academics will say there's no such thing as a stupid question. It's time for us to look at what the spirit of Yahuwah has to say. If it's foolish, avoid such. If it's a stupid question, something that is not worth entertaining, we must begin to discern what this means, my brothers and sisters. Titus 3.9 says, but keep away from foolish questions and genealogies and strife and quarrels about the Torah, for they are unprofitable and useless. Are we not arguing over what's, what's the Torah? It's the five books. No, it's not. Yes, it is. My brothers and sisters, look at the definition of Torah and come away from the arguing, the strife, the quarrels. This has no profitability in our growth, O Yasharal. Genealogies. When they say foolish questions and genealogies, the Most High knows how to raise up Lift up those who will represent the 12 tribes of Yasharal. And he knows how to move one to recognize that if they mainly are seeking to do the will of the Almighty Father, that if they don't know it's the specific tribe, they know one thing, that there is one tribe, the tribe of set-apart Yasharal, commonly known as Israel. And I'm not talking about a geographic location. I'm talking about a people of Yasharal. Make no mistake. We don't have to argue, and we don't need to be trusting these genealogy mechanisms. Pray and watch. End times will deliver those who need to represent the 12 tribes of Yasharal as mentioned in the scriptures. 
Those who need to represent will rise up and will know unequivocally with power and might. And those who need to fall under the banner of Yasharal, specifically representing the set-apart nation of the Almighty Father, will know their place. So don't get into an argument, and don't be jealous because one may be called to represent Zebulon, or Benjamin, or Yehuda, and you can't identify. Don't be jealous, don't be envious, don't spend time arguing. You see, end times require certain things come to be. So there will be those representing the 12 tribes, and there will be those that is part of the set-apart, total set-apart nation of Yasharal. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. My brothers and sisters, the time is now for us to begin to recognize Every step we take is important. Every direction we go is important. We can learn, we can gather, we can learn some more, we can be strengthened. Yashra, my brothers and sisters, what say you on this matter? Are you ready to identify set about steps? Are you ready to discern the details that are growing and going before us? My brothers and sisters, the journey, knowing what's next. This segment was entitled The Awakening, What's Next? Did you get some information talking about what next or things you should consider? Did you get some information that builds your expectation? First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 17 reads, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the desire of the Almighty One and Messiah Yahushua for you. Ephesians 5, 17 through 21. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Yahuwah is. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is loose behavior, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to each other in psalms and songs and praise and spiritual songs, singing and striking the strings in your heart to the master, giving thanks always for all to the Almighty One, the Father, in the name of our Master, Yahushua Messiah. Subjecting yourselves to each other in the fear of the Almighty One. My brothers and sisters, There are individuals that would prefer to water down the word fear. There are people and brothers and sisters who get it wrong, my brothers and sisters. They want to water things down. They want to dismiss things. It's important for us to recognize end time re responsibilities require us to discern our position and expect to discover that there are tasks ahead. Are we doing our own thing, so to speak? Are we walking until such time as we identify what he's saying do? Have he answered our questions, but we've dismissed them in unbelief? Watch, my brothers and sisters. The tribulation period brings distress. Famine, pestilence, and diseases bring distress. It weakens the mind and the body. In some cases, we will become even spiritually weak. Our spirit, until we identify he that is the Almighty One working in us, until we identify the power of the blood of the Lamb, Yahushua, until we identify that Yahuwah sent his set-apart spirit in Yahushua's name, weakness will come, and some will wake up at resurrection, and some of us will rise up with the strength and power and might and fortitude of set-apartness given by the Almighty Father. Yes, end time brings responsibilities, my brothers and sisters. Let me read the following.
my brothers and sisters, we will learn that subjecting ourselves one to another is his spirit working in us, through us, one towards each other. It doesn't mean just we slave to one another just to be slaves or servants to one another just to be servants. It means for us to identify what he's saying to us. That's all, my brothers and sisters, consider the words from Proverbs eleven fourteen. It says, without guidance, the people fall, but in a great counselor, there is safety. Some translations will say in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. And it doesn't mean let's, let's add up all the numbers of the people that counsel. I pick some people here, pick some people there. There must be unity. There must be wisdom. There must be obedience amongst the counselors we seek information from. If we don't see the set apart spirit of the most high working in them, these are not the counselors you will find safety. As end times ramp up, safety will become a critical factor. Proverbs 12, 15 say, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. Again, he's speaking of the counsel of his children, the children of the Almighty Father. Isaiah 30, verse 1 and 2 says, Woe to the stubborn children, declares Yahuwah, to make counsel but not from me, and to devise plans but not of my spirit, in order to add sin to sin who are setting out to go down to Mitzrayim, Egypt, and have not asked my mouth to be strengthened in the strength of Pharaoh and to seek refuge in the shadow of Mitzrayim, Egypt. Now, my brothers and sisters, as I mentioned to you, identifying steps is critical. End times are here. Make no mistake. There's work to be done. And even though what I just read was talking about Yasharal's experience in Mitzrayim or Egypt, I submit to you some of the same similar challenges we are facing as we prepare for this final and last exodus, my brothers and sisters. Make no mistake, some of us will be contributors towards the building up of Yasharal and may not witness being among the ranks of those gathered, and some of us will be among the ranks of those gathered from the four corners of the earth before the physical return of Yahushua Mashiach. To identify set-apart steps and discern the details is important, and we will begin to learn when we sincerely start coming away from entertainment or just hanging out because it feels good. We will begin to discern steps when we begin to ask questions that breed answers and then we sort through the answers to identify which answers are indeed from the Almighty Father, Yahuwah. Make no mistake, my brothers and sisters. End times are here. What say you on these matters? So, my brothers and sisters, we are awakening. End times is bringing about proof from our left to our right, in front of us and behind us. What next? We identify our responsibilities. We identify what we're being trained to do. We identify our assignments. What next? We witness the hand of the Most High. Work His promises in us, through us one towards another, and before an awakening nation. Questions and answers. There's so much work ahead of us, O Yashara, and there are plans. It's time for us to begin to ask ourselves, are we going through ritualistic exercises and fellowship? Are we gaining and getting stronger? Are we preparing for what needs to happen? Have our teachers and leaders equipped us so in the, in the midst of their death, we know what to do? Or are we going to say, I'd be lost without this person or that person? While we have breath as the Most High lead, let us equip those who listen with words to know what is required to draw closer to the Most High, to respond, to identify Key factors, my brothers and sisters, 
key factors that I brought up that I went through in this segment. My brothers and sisters, answers from the Most High. Remember this slide? Remember these words? Drawn, belief, discern, see, hear, worship, obey. What next? Discern the life in these, know when to respond. And just because there are those that are moving doesn't mean you have to move right then and there. You may be called to be still. Timing is of the essence, so Yasharal. Being in the right place at the right time is critical. And there are plans, my brothers and sisters. There are plans that will link together. Look at these bullets and ask yourself, are you a participant? Are you a deliverer of messages and instructions? Are you aware of a team of leaders that you can identify as counselors from the Almighty Father when you have questions that you can go to this multitude of counselors? I say to you, White Rose family has a plan to vet and be used by the Most High to prove those that are chosen leaders. Are you tired of going to someone and being misled? White Rose family plan consists of developer information and resource center, both virtual and physical. You see, we still operate in practical sense. We drive, we go to work, we walk, we catch public transportation. We build, we clean, we provide a service, we provide a profession. Do you know of anyone that has demonstrated a model where this is who you can call if it's a plumbing need, a mechanical need, a planting, a gardening need, a building, a need to learn how to engage one another, a customer service need, a health need, caring for our senior. You see, my brothers and sisters, where is that central center? And if you do not see it, where do you see the building? Where do you see that work in process? Or do you find yourselves, do we find ourselves just being entertained in circular ways that's not bringing about the strength that is necessary? To build a team with people who understand what it is to be a mentor to the unlearned, to the young, or even the old who are unlearned. And if you believe there's a final exodus, have you given thought? Where are the exit points of Yasharal? There must be. And if there are exit points, do you think we're just going to be being there immediately? Make no mistake. And I believe without a doubt, wholeheartedly, that the Western Hemisphere, the exit point will be for those who are drawn to fulfill the final exodus, will be in the state of Virginia. Who has preserved or identified where that land will be or how it would come to be. Pray and watch, my brothers and sisters. Identify safe zones. If you're traveling across land, do you know where you can stop if you must stop in another city, another state to rest up, to fuel up? For not many will have the stamina to drive three days journey, two days journey, or even a day's journey. Sometimes when there is mass movement, my brother and sister, it requires resting and giving the person that's weakest among you time to strengthen up. Where are these in the plans of those among us who are our leaders who speak of a final exodus? Yasharal, White Rose family has a plan. Where is the plan that provides guidance and support for completing the journey to the promised land for those who will be among the final to be gathered? Where is the plan that provides guidance for those who are set apart? It focuses on the children of the Almighty Father. Where is the plan for watching Yahushua Mashiach's physical turn, uh, waiting, knowing what to do while we are waiting on Yahushua Mashiach's physical return? I say to you, my brothers and sisters, White Rose family, will contribute to a plan. And it's not the be-all, end-all plan, O Yasharal. 
It is a contributing factor. It is a spoke in the wheel. It is a cog in the mechanism that will bring about support and unity among an awakening set apart nation. And with all plans, my brothers and sisters, there's a cost. Let us count the cost. And I say this and I say it often, use it or lose it. We will come to see the magnitude of Matthew 25, 14 through 30. In days ahead, we will witness those who once had the strength to build, to grow, to plant, to carry, to lead, lose it because they didn't use it. Or maybe they used it for a while and they got off the beaten path. They got off the path that Most High had, the straightened path, and they found themselves decaying, withering away. Make no mistake, there will be a collapse ultimately in what is known as the economy. So if you have wealth, the time is now to use it while you can. Vet, ask questions, and seek to discern who the Most High is directing you to support or help, or maybe he is calling you to lead and be a good steward and recipient of wealth to contribute elements and components to the building up of set apart Yasharal. My brothers and sisters, if you are receiving any information that contributes towards you drawing closer to the Almighty Father, any information that I'm providing, I ask and I ask again, would you subscribe? It helps, it contributes towards the building up of Yasharal. If what I'm doing or saying provides something that strengthens you, subscribe, share with others. They may get something out of it that you didn't get. You may get something out of it that they don't get. And together when you discuss these matters, if indeed being led by the Almighty Father, you discover something that was right before your very eyes and ears. Consider supporting. Make your skills known. Share your skills, your resources, supplies, or develop a readiness to share as when the time is right. Sponsor, at the very least, this plan, O Yasharal. I set up a cash app under White Rose Family. Cash App, White Rose Family. I also have a PayPal account, and there are other means to financially support. My email is below if you want to contribute your strength, something you found favor in the Almighty Father that you believe needs to be recognized or sharpened or polished in a set-apart way. Reach out, O Yasharal. Soon and very soon, a sense of urgency will come. This awakening, what next, demands questions. There are answers waiting to be received by those who desire to listen, to discern, to spiritually see and physically see the path that the Most High is carving before us. There will be no retakes, O Yasharal, though these media platforms give you a rewind button. Make no mistake. Everything that we do, every action that we demonstrate was just that. It came and went. We can't rewind and take it back. Let us learn the power of the blood of the Lamb of Yahushua, how it indeed erases the weights that can bring about guilt or self-condemnation on something that we did in the past or we made a mistake in the past. Let us realize the blood of Yahushua renews us makes us new, gives us the go-ahead to rise up in the strength of his set-apart spirit. On that note, I say to you, I salute your patience, your tolerance, your hunger for set-apartness, your love for the Almighty Father, your desire to identify and know what is expected. My name is Simoniah, and you're listening to a White Rose Family. Words that I believe I'm compelled to present. Pray, O Yasharal. Study. Pray some more. Watch. And seek to discern and respond with accuracy and completeness. In the name of Yahushua, I come to you and I say to you, Shalom.